Last week, we showed you what a comet was made of. This week, we're going to show you how the Rosetta mission is going to try and catch one. And for this, we're going to need a spinny chair and some balls. ESA launched Rosetta in 2004, taking a 10-year tour around the solar system before finally catching up to its target in August of this year. So Beth, you're going to be our ESA rocket scientist today and you're going to sit on our lovely spinny chair, which is planet Earth. Ah, spinning chair, spinning Earth, OK. And we're going to give you a box of satellites, which you can use to hit the comet. OK. So what's our comet today? Well, we don't have a real comet, but we do have one of these, which is going to be our comet today. You can use as many of those satellites as you want to try and hit the comet, but bear in mind that each one costs one billion euros. OK, let's go. OK. So, if you start spinning there... In reality, ESA are trying to shoot a four kilometer wide target, moving at 135,000 kilometers per hour, six billion kilometers away. So Beth, how do you think that went? Uh, not so good. Um, threw about 50 balls there, and I think I only hit it once. So uh, I just used about 50 billion euros. And the scientists at ESA only have one bullet. Yeah, let's hope their aim is a little bit better than mine. Well, luckily they are rocket scientists, and their bullet is a little bit more high tech than this one. The three-ton Rosetta orbiter is packed with solar panels, instruments capable of analysing the nucleus of a comet, and a robotic lander. But not even the most powerful rockets on Earth are capable of sending a satellite to a speeding comet. It's not as simple as point and shoot. The biggest problem in aerospace engineering is overcoming the force of gravity. To launch something from the surface of Earth into orbit, it costs roughly 3,500 euros per kilogram. So, with every mission, you need to overcome gravity by finding the right balance between the amount of fuel you need, the weight of the fuel in your cargo, and the cost of the fuel. So if we don't have enough fuel or power to get there, how are we going to catch this comet? Well, once we get into space, gravity can actually be a very useful tool to help us gain speed. We can perform a slingshot manoeuvre called a gravity assist. A gravity assist works by using the motion of a planet orbiting the Sun to accelerate your spacecraft. As your craft travels towards the planet and gets caught in its gravitational pull, it accelerates as it falls towards it. As the craft moves away from the planet, it decelerates as gravity pulls back on it. So it would seem as if the overall difference is zero. But because the planet is orbiting the sun, we can use the motion of the planet to give our craft a push in the right direction. By lining up the satellite with the direction the planet is moving, we can give the craft a boost. To catch up with the comet, Rosetta performed four gravity assists, going around the Earth twice, then out to Mars and back to Earth for a final boost before zooming on its way to Comet 67P. In November of this year, Rosetta will harpoon itself to the comet's surface. This mission will give us an unprecedented view of a comet as it starts to heat up and grow a tail on its closest approach to the Sun. And hopefully it will unlock some of our solar system's secrets. For more on the science of comets, watch Sarah and Ross show you how to make one. And for more science every week, click subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>